car and get it delivered. Perfect. Driveway.com. Car buying delivered on your terms and on your turf. It's easy to think all money managers are pretty much the same, but at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different? How? You sell high commission investment products, right? No, Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission-based investment products. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. Nope, never at Fisher. We're a fiduciary, obligated to act in our client's best interest. It's the highest That's standard weird. for a financial That's advisor. Weird. How do that you know what's in their best interest? The we get ramp. to know our clients and then tailor a portfolio based on their goals and needs. But you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No, we have one transparent management fee structured so we do better when our clients do better. Wow, you really do look out for your clients. That's because our top priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. They might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly different money management. Investments and securities and all of this involves. Some fans here are for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NBA team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NBA team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Help Mother Waddles to help those in need by donating your car. Your car donation to Mother Waddles will provide food and shelter to the poorest of the poor. Call Mother Waddles today and change a life. Call 313 Waddles. Get the extra juice you need to enjoy and bet weekend football. Numbers, angles, and ball busting. Cash the ticket with Mike Valeni and Jim Costa. Get it on Odyssey or wherever you get your podcasts. WXYT FM and WXYT HD1 Detroit. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Sports headlines. Live from the Jamie Samuelson studio. This is 97.1 The Ticket. Brought to you by Moran Buick GMC. With the Lions on the cusp of a potential playoff spot, they open the week as three-point favorites with their next game at Carolina on Saturday afternoon. A combination of a win and losses by Washington and Seattle would put them in the seventh seed with two weeks remaining. Now tonight, the Packers will face the Rams to wrap up week 15 in the NFL. A Green Bay win would keep them a game behind the Lions at the playoff chase. A L.A. win would hurt Detroit's second first-round pick. The Red Wings will face the Capitals tonight with Alex Ovechkin one goal away from tying Gordy Howe for second on the all-time list. Head coach Derek Lamone does not want to see that happen against Howe's former team. Hopefully we actually see that personal fact. Um, what uh, Gordy Howe is, he needs his organization. So hopefully they take that over personal and try to push them back for someone else. Lamone also says he plans to switch up power play personnel with Joe Valeno and Michael Rasmussen been frustrated with their poor special teams during a five-game losing streak. He also says that Dylan Larkin will be available after a maintenance day yesterday. Ken Cal and Paul Woods will have tonight's call right here on 97 won the ticket at 7 o'clock, pregame at 6.45. At the Ticket Update desk, from Chris Falara for more, go to 97 won the ticket and odyssey.com. Live from the Jamie Samuelson studio, Kaj and Anderson on 97 won the ticket. Doug Kosh, solo today. Gators got the day off. Hey, man. Except um, he showed up. <laughs> what are you doing? He did it again! He did it again! He did it again! He did Well, because I had... I took my... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It's his day off! I... I wrote down all the predictions from Friday. Yep. Right? Yep. Dang was here. We did the show. I thought I saw you typing them in or something. Oh, yeah. I typed okay. them all in. Uh -huh. And then I, I printed them, and I must not have picked them up from the printer and to take them back to the desk after the show. So when you were asking for them this morning, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I, I texted you last night. Yep. I just said, yeah, they're over by the way. The predictions should be on my, uh, by my desk. And they were not. You let me know this morning. They were not. So I'm like, oh, crap. I feel bad. I was going to come in at some point. And I said, all right, I'll, 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 you know, done with the dog this morning and got an extra hour of sleep. I said, fine, I'll come in. And then as I'm driving in, I hear the worst history lesson ever given. 
You know, that guy was so bad with the history lesson. You just made the list. Terrible. Getting, getting, you know, the uh, the situation wrong with Minnesota and their comeback of 33 points. I mean, 33 to nothing in the comeback. That's it's really, it's yep. absolutely incredible. I have a friend of mine in, on Facebook who I went to uh, middle school with and high school with for a year. Best athlete I ever knew. Best athlete I ever knew. And he left uh, after our freshman year to go and live in Minnesota. Wow. Um, so he's a huge sports fan, and he's a huge Vikings what? fan now. And on Facebook, Nothing. he was just killing the Vikings. I mean, killing the Vikings. Well, yeah. was he the guy killing yeah. the Vikings? Right, but he kills them. He's, one, he's like a Lions fan, right? Kills them all the time, and then, you know, if something good happens, he's reluctant to get the credit. But then when that happens, I'm like, I want to see what, what my friend Chris had written. It. <laughs> he's like, yeah, okay, my bad. Great comeback, unbelievable this. Um, so, yeah, Vikings comeback, he got wrong. Then he tries. To, then he goes. Hey, let me tell you about Frank Wright. Like Frank, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect. <laughs> Do you play football? It's Frank Reich. Frank Reich. Yes, former Detroit Lion. Which I don't know if he mentioned or not. But um, I don't think he did. Yeah, that was there was another part of the history unless you might want to get to. Uh, and, and and again, former coach of the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Um, yeah. So it gets his his story wrong with the comeback against the Oilers in the playoffs. Which was again a fantastic, game. incredible comeback. I remember watching it at my uh, at my parents' house back in the day, and I'm like, "Oh my God!" And watching the comeback, wow. this he is just, amazing. I mean, he just got the numbers wrong. It was a 32-point deficit. Yeah, but that was, was the point of his call, yeah, though. Yeah, call. but he's giving you the history <laughs> lesson, and then he and then he starts talking about it. I went Merrill, and he had a, another. I'm like, "No, he got that one right too." Yeah, got it all wrong to the point where he got it all wrong. That I feel like I need to go in Wikipedia whether or not. Tobin Root had to come in for Bobby Lane. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> and and I I'm like, Brian, I pull it up and Brian's like, Doug, <laughs> you know I hate the Lions. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, we we know Brian, we know it. And he's like, the Lions well, need more. Like, uh, it's it's a debate. Now, Brian, uh, Brian's great, and I love Brian, and I love well, Brian. Brian calls. Brian calls to give me crap. Brian almost never gives you crap. You're more right than wrong. <laughs> but I love Brian, and I haven't heard from Brian in a while. So, Merry Christmas to Brian. Glad that he called up. And but Brian also will let you know when he's wrong. Yep. He doesn't do the Fonzie. I'm like, <laughs> He actually comes out and says that he was wrong. So good for Brian to get that off his chest. Horrible history lesson. We got caller Brian praising the Lions. And yes, I came in on my day off. But really, <laughs> of the three things that happened, that's probably the, the most predictable. It one is that happened. really the most predictable. Yeah, but I do have the prediction. Is this the fourth part. time he's done it? <laughs> <I know. laughs> like I said, I need a sounder at this point. Yeah. It's happening so much. <laughs> Look, I had to be out and about anyway, right? Not really. Yeah, you were going to leave your house at some point. Yeah, sure, I might as well go to work. I don't know. I got to get back today at some point. I got the refrigerator repair guy coming. Um, anyway, so I do have the predictions from Friday. From Friday. Yes, I wrote down 26 of them. There were many more that came in through uh, text, but people weren't signing their texts. So I didn't keep track of those. Sure. Out of the 26, 11 of them... Nailed the Jets score at 17. Really? Yeah. That's a lot. That was very popular number for the Jets. I mean, 17 yeah. just kept coming up. Um, the uh, the closest, we go, I'll say this. Kang had the score right. <laughs> he thought the Jets would win 20 to 17. He said, this is the one game they lo- that they lose the rest of the way. Kang said that. So, now Kang... Gonna, you're going to double down and say this is they're going to win out? Yeah, they, they right. were going to run the table. This was the only That's what he nervous said. game. That's what he said, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have the score, Lions 24, Jets 17. Pretty good. Yeah. Back but, to back, you were off by one point on the Jacksonville game. Yeah. Not and by you're four, off by four points. Look at this game. Yeah. I, I said the Lions will run for more you than 120. You just missed your turn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now um, we know why he, maybe we know why he came in now. No, but my man. Look at this prediction. Yeah, but my man Brock Wright. I love Brock. Dude, I, I, he, he, would you love him when he dropped that pass? No, I was, I was trying. I was trying. I was trying to get, he drops the one right before, and I go, dude. So let this is. You're by one play a game, Brock Wright. You're the guy. You get one play a game. You get one play and you blew it. 
But it was a it was again. a setup, Gator. It was uh, a setup. Oh, uh, <laughs> part of an elaborate ruse. Never throw to him again. And what happens on fourth and inches? And and game on Goff the line. Jumps back and he's like looking to the middle, and I'm thinking, no, St. Brown's covered. They got him covered. Yeah. And who shows up? Da 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 da. <sighs> Brock Wright. Well, I mean, uh, let's face it. We were all thinking the same thing. Big play, late game, fourth quarter. Lions in a in a you know must convert situation. And clearly the Jets thought it too. They double teamed Penny Sewell. Lions couldn't go to Penny <laughs> Sewell, and so the next best thing was Brock Wright, right? I guess we're gonna throw throw it to the tight end instead of the tackle. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about Ben Johnson. I don't think he had a great game. I, I don't think he was great. And the offense wasn't great. And look, I don't spend a whole ton of time ripping on play calling because I think it's it's you know play calls and game plans are so complex that you can you can argue the result. And at the end of the day, they 